My friend set me up on a blind date with my stalker, so I escaped over a seven foot fence. My friend set me up on a blind date with my stalker and they followed me to my house. The party was in full swing and as you can imagine, I was a few winds deep when I noticed three of my friends giggling in my direction. I heard one of them whisper, I wonder if he is going to turn up. Curious, I sidled over and asked, what are you giggling about? A few side glances later and they revealed that they had set me up with a guy from their workplace. I had no idea this was on the cards, and immediately I felt a wave of anxiety wash through my body. I wasn't ready for a chance meeting, and I certainly didn't like the fact that they were planning on surprising me. I do okay for myself. I didn't need them to get involved, and although I appreciated the gesture, it felt violating. I said, absolutely not. Who is this guy? Sarah explained that John was a colleague, six foot one with dark hair and a successful salesman. He's so funny. You'll love him. He speaks French and has a dog called Murphy. I blinked. This was all sounding too familiar. I asked, is he a tech lead with a black BMW? Sarah's eyebrows shot up. Yes. Wait, do you know this man? She showed me a picture on Instagram. I felt like my stomach was about to explode. Sarah, this is the guy who stalked me. The group gasped like a courtroom drama, and by this stage I was getting angry. I told you all about this, and given my experience, how could you place me in such a difficult situation? John and I had been on about four dates last year. He was very charming and appeared to be considerate and successful. But after date four things took a downward turn. He would come to my place of work without telling me, and he told my colleagues that we were together. One time he texted me and said, who was the guy you were talking to in Pret on Monday? It was super weird and I began to feel afraid of what he might do. One time he left a note on my car windscreen that missing you always you are the light of my life. It was too much in the end, so I reported him to the police and got a restraining order against him. Once I had revised the situation with the girls, I heard the sound of a car pulling up on the gravel outside. Run, I thought. Without another word, I placed my drink down and calmly walked through the crowded party and out into the garden. I carefully picked my way down to the end and looked for an escape route. I stared at the seven-foot fence that surrounded me. Inside. There was only one way out. I took off my shoes, struggling to balance in my semi-drunk state, and with my shoes firmly grasped in my hand, I jumped as high as I could and somehow managed to cling to the top of the fence. I hurled myself over the fence, catching my dress on a nail as I fell. Landing face first. I snapped the heel of my shoe and shakily stood up, aware that my dress was hanging off one shoulder and I had cut my face. I heard my name being called, so I sprinted as fast as I could down the dirt track, I didn't stop until I got to my front door. Barricading myself inside, I thought I was safe, but then I heard footsteps on my driveway. Making sure all the lights were off, I ran upstairs and hid in my bathroom. I could see the driveway from the window, so I peeped out to see John and Sarah outside. Why is Sarah with John when she knows the story? I thought, fearful of what might happen if she managed to get inside. I heard Sarah shout, Kala, are you there? We are worried about you. You left so suddenly. Come down. I remained silent, praying they would leave until they.